My friends that don't like marmalade who've tried my kumquat marmalade are surprised and actually like it. Or at least that's what they tell me. <laughs> I think they do. Hi guys, I'm Elisa at Mokwati Chomesteady. Today I'm making kumquat marmalade. Kumquat trees are small compact citrus trees that are fairly cold, hardy and handle the mid 40 degree heat waves pretty well and they produce a lot of fruit. I grew this tree in a pot for about five to ten years, I can't really remember how long it was, before planting it into the ground a few years ago and it always produced plenty of fruit. The good thing about kumquats is the fruit can stay on the tree for many months so you can pick throughout that time. You can also pick the fruit and freeze it by washing it and putting it in sealed containers. To a heavy duty saucepan add in your lemon juice to the water, slice up your kumquats, removing any pips that just happen to fall out. You don't have to remove them all because they go soft and you can eat them but if any fall out I like to remove them just to reduce the amount of seeds that are in the, the marmalade. Place the fruit into the saucepan as well and then bring it to the boil. Boil gently for five minutes and then remove from the heat covering and let it stand in the refrigerator for up to 18 hours. Measure your fruit and liquid together in cups into a larger saucepan so that you know how many cups of sugar you will need to add because the ratio is one cup of fruit mixture to one cup of sugar. It's really important when you're making marmalade or jams to really have everything prepared because once it's made it's going to be starting to set if you don't get everything happening very quickly. So get organised first and then it won't be too much of a drama. And I'm setting up for canning because we're going to be water bath canning this kumquat marmalade. In the bowls at the front I've got a little bowl of vinegar which is just white vinegar to wipe down the rims of the jars some lids sitting in some warm water and the rings. I've got nine sterilized half pint jars here and I'm just going to check them for nicks out of the rim because if there's nicks out of the rim obviously the lid's not going to seal properly and I'll check for cracks as well because I don't want any breakages in my canner because that will be a waste of beautiful marmalade and a big mess to clean up. I've got a funnel to fit the jars my tool for checking the headspace as well as getting any air bubbles out. And my magnet tool for removing the lids out of the warm water. I've also got my jars on a tea towel because the jars are going to get hot once I fill them up and it'll damage the table underneath if I don't have something under the jars. Also it's going to be really messy and it's easier to remove a tea towel and throw it in the wash than to be trying to get it all off the table. Just in my opinion, that's how I like to do things. It's up to you how you do it. I also have a clean tea towel to dip into the vinegar to wipe the jar rims. So I think I'm pretty set here. Over this side I've got my marmalade mixture and some sugar because I'm going to need to add in all my sugar. I have my water bath canner set up over at the stove top. I'll add in enough warm water to cover the jars. I put my tray in the bottom so that the jars don't break when they're being canned and I have my jar remover and my stirring spoon when I'm making the jam. I've got 18 cups of the marmalade mixture so I'm going to be adding in 18 cups of white sugar which is a lot of sugar. But I'm making a double batch so the recipe is in the description below and it will be for half the amount of this which should fill nine half pint jars. Now it's ready to go on the stove top and I've got this wooden chopping board here so that when I bring it back and it's hot it can sit on that and protect the table. Let's go. On a medium heat stir until the sugar dissolves then bring the mixture to a boil over medium heat. This takes time so you need to be patient, you need to not leave your marmalade, you need to be stirring the whole time. You need to not have children under your feet because the marmalade is going to get up to about 220 degrees Fahrenheit 
and you also don't want pets that you're going to trip over either especially if you're moving the jam around once it's ready now once it's boiling we want it to get up to almost the gelling point so that's 220 degrees Fahrenheit so continue to stir consistently and once it gets there remove from the heat if you want to skim off the foam you can do that I never worry about that or you can add a dollop of butter if you don't want the foam I don't do either of those things turn it off the heat place a lid on if you're going to be moving it because you don't want to be moving it if it's, you don't want it to spill or splash or anything like that. It's for safety because it's like burning lava. I get my canner straight on now on low so it can warm up while I'm setting up and putting all my marmalade into the jars. Carefully laid with a hot mixture into the jars, leaving a quarter of an inch of headspace and try not to get any of the liquid on you because it's burning hot. Using your debubbler tool or you can use a flat knife, remove your air bubbles. This is a measuring tool and this is how you can measure how much headspace you have in your jar. If you place it on the first rung, which is this one here, you can see that it's just touching the top of the marmalade there and that's one quarter of an inch headspace. If you wanted half an inch headspace you'd place it on that run three quarters and a whole inch. It's a, it's a really handy and valuable tool when you're canning. Especially if you're using the ball mason jars and the flat lids because if you get the right headspace that helps for the lids to seal properly and you get less siphoning and all the different things that can go wrong if you don't have the right amount of headspace. And we want the lids to seal properly. So it's worth the effort making sure you get it as close to perfect as you can. Add or remove jam to get it right. Next up we want to clean the rims of the jars and how we do that is we use the clean tea towel, dip it into the white vinegar and then just wipe any extra syrupy, sugary, marmalade mess off the top of the rim and the thread as well. and then use a clean part of your tea towel to just wipe around as well. Now be very careful because the jars are super hot and you may need to use part of the tea towel to help turn the jar so that you don't burn yourself. Try not to dip the tea towel into the marmalade. Right, next up we get a canning lid, place it on the top, centre it and with a ring screw it on so it's finger tight not you don't need to grab it and tighten it up just so that it's finger tight. Centre the lid, place your ring on And finger tight. Take your jars over to the canner. I've got the water in the canner warming up. I don't have a rack so once it starts to boil I place my jars carefully into the canner one at a time. You want to have at least one inch headspace over the jars. I have a little bit more than that because I'm using, oh, I'm actually using my pressure canner and I'm not going to put the dial gauge in so it's going to have a hole in the middle so it's not going to be a sealed unit. So once all my jars are in I have about an inch and a half headspace because I will lose some steam while I'm canning. Now that'll come back up to the boil. I'll be able to see that it comes up to the boil because it'll start 
shooting steam out, which it is. You can see that there. Now I'm going to process the half pint jars for 10 minutes. Once the 10 minutes is up, I'm going to turn off the heat, carefully remove the cover away from myself, letting it drip the hot water into the canner and then put it somewhere where it's not going to burn or melt anything. Let the jars cool for five minutes and then remove the jars from the canner. Don't retighten the bands if they're loose or touch them, just leave them. Place your hot jars onto a wooden board so that it doesn't damage your table. And I also have a tea towel on top of the wooden board so that there's not a shock from hot to cold, although it is 40 degrees Celsius here today. Not the best day to be making jam, but there won't be much shock due to diff temperature differentiation. All my jars have sealed. All the lids are sucked in nicely. And after 12 hours, you can remove the rings, wash your jars and label them and pop them away in, on the shelf or in your cupboard. If you've got more kumquats, then check out my kumquat brandy video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.